In Code Geass, Geass is a supernatural ability that distinguishes the great from the common. The power of the king lets its few users transcend the ordinary rules of men, all in unique ways. We saw many different Geass abilities in the original run of Code Geass, but we very rarely saw Geass users actually go head to head. We're going to be taking a look at every single Geass ability in the show and ranking them in a tier list, based on how it would do in one-on-one -on -one fights against another Geass ability. Think of it like a Highlander scenario, there can be only one winner. That said, we're not going to be considering how any ability is used specifically in the show, just how strong it could be potentially if used right. In other words, this list is more about the Geass powers themselves. My name is Zero, this is Kato, and today let's rank every single Geass ability in Lelouch of the Rebellion. It's a little hard to decide who to put at the very bottom of this list. None of these Geass abilities are bad to have, but in a straight one-on-one -on -one scenario, some of them are much more useful than others. If it's a battle between Geass users, then Marion has to be at the bottom of the list. Marion's Geass allows her to transfer her body into somebody else. In this state, she keeps her Geass, which might give her the ability to go back into her body if she ever needs to. It seemed to work just by eye contact alone, making this ability actually very easy to use. The only problem is that this ability doesn't have any combat use outside of turning the fight into what's at best a draw. Sure, Marianne can take over somebody else's body, but then what? Does she live the rest of her own life in their body, knowing that if she ever changes bodies, the original Geass user is still waiting to finish the fight? Marianne just doesn't have a clear win condition in this kind of contest. But to her credit, she could theoretically stalemate anyone if she had a fully matured Geass. It's one of the strongest defensive Geass abilities in the series, but it just isn't quite useful enough in a fight against another Geass user. That's not a knock against this ability, all of the other abilities we'll go over are just too strong. This next one is a bit of a strange one, seeing as we only really saw this Geass being used for a handful of seconds. In the Geass order, we see one of the kids using a Geass ability on a soldier. Through eyesight alone, the kid was able to completely take over the body of their Britannian victim. If that wasn't enough, he was able to manipulate the soldier's body with simple hand gestures. Each gesture seemed to be able to convey multiple instructions. For example, with just a flick of the wrist, he made the soldier get back into his nightmare before attacking another. Let's call this ability puppeteering. There are some weaknesses with this ability though, including that you seem to need to maintain control over the target manually to give them instructions. Also in a battle against other Geass users, while killing your opponent in a one-on-one -on -one will grant you a win, many of the other Geass powers we'll talk about can do quite a bit more than that. But the biggest weakness is that the victim seems aware they're being controlled and they can struggle against themselves. That probably means other Geass users could activate theirs in response to being hit by this one. It's at least much better than Marion since it provides an actual win condition, i.e. taking someone over and gesturing them to finish themselves off. Up next is Mao. Geass can be a curse, and nowhere is that more true than for this silver-haired devil. Mao's Geass allows him to unconsciously read the mind of anyone in a 500 meter radius. If there are too many people in an area, then Mao has a hard time blocking everyone out. Mao uses his Geass to read a person's innermost desires and fears using them to manipulate others with his words alone. It's a familiar set of skills, but in a Geass battle, it isn't quite as strong as it may seem. After all, many other Geass abilities can take much more direct control of a person, which is a more obvious win condition than subtly manipulating them. There's also the fact that this ability's strength depends on who it is used against. Against Lelouch, who's constantly thinking about his own weaknesses, this Geass ability is absurdly powerful. Against someone else, it might be less useful, it might not even be that useful at all. Mao himself knows his weaknesses, seeing as he's the first character we see wearing a visor to block out his eyes, specifically as a counter against other Geass users. Where Mao's ability really shines is in defense. If Mao can always read an attack before it begins by reading his opponent's mind, then he has much more time to prepare. In an isolated one-on-one, -on -one, where Mao only has to focus on one person, his Geass provides the earliest defense and weakest attack out of all of them. Bismarck has what is probably the most underrated Geass ability on this list. His Geass allows him to see someone's movements a few seconds into the future, allowing him to react to them almost supernaturally. Being able to see your opponent's moves before they can make them is an almost insurmountable advantage in combat. 
to the point where Bismarck was the Knight of One in the original series. Against a Geos user, this might even allow Bismarck to anticipate when a person might attempt to use their Geos on him. For Geos abilities which require phrases to activate, Bismarck could see their lip movements in advance and just keep himself from making direct eye contact. The only problem is that this ability isn't infallible. Bismarck lost to Suzaku in a nightmare duel, despite being able to read his future. This means that if the difference in ability is too great, then even Bismarck's Geos can be overcome. Besides, it's not an instant win condition like some abilities on this list, Bismarck would still have to physically defeat his opponent, even when some of his opponents can defeat him with just a stray look. Bismarck can probably beat anyone on this list physically, but that's an exploitable weakness to have in a Geos fight. It's a small weakness in his case, and one that just barely keeps Bismarck from cracking the highest tier of Geos users. Rolo is one of the most interesting Geos abilities in the series. His Geos allows him to stop people's perception of time in an area, effectively freezing them in place as if Rolo had actually stopped time. In a one-on-one -on -one setting, this would let Rolo very casually Geos and beat anyone standing against him. Rolo does have to complete the win with a weapon of some sort, but his victim is completely helpless unlike with Bismarck's Geos. This ability, unlike many others, requires no direct eye contact, you just have to be standing close enough to Rolo. The only problem with this ability is that it doesn't seem quite as quick as some of the other Geos abilities in the show. In the anime, Rolo's Geos was shown as a quickly expanding sphere, while some of the other abilities on this list, such as Lelouch's, are pretty much instant once you make eye contact. Even if this is just stylistic, it's still visually depicted as slower moving than other Geos powers. It's also not very flexible. I mean, all Rolo can really do is ensnare someone with his ability and kill them if they're in a certain radius. Besides, it just stops the perception of time, not time itself. So say, any inanimate objects hurtling towards Rolo will hit him all the same. A mid-air Geos attack might land as well. It's a small weakness, but another big weakness is that Rolo can't use his Geos indefinitely. It places a strain on his own heart, which is what eventually killed him. Even without dying, Rolo can only use his Geos in short bursts, meaning it's entirely possible that his Geos can wear off before he can finish a fight. With all of that in mind, Rolo feels like he belongs at the top of A tier, maybe at the bottom of S tier if you really want to be generous. We're finally on to our last tier of abilities, and we're going to put Charles at the bottom here. Charles' Geos allows him to rewrite the memories of anyone he maintains eye contact with, to the point where he can even make another Geos user forget they had a Geos ability to begin with. It's basically an instant win, minus Charles needing to use a verbal command before the ability takes hold. Besides being the first instant win, this Geos is the first to allow flexibility. Charles doesn't only beat his opponent, he can rewrite their memories to turn them into whatever he wants. That's a much more complete one-on-one -on -one victory than just killing your opponent. The one caveat is that Charles is the only person in the series we see whose Geos has actually been broken. We see this twice, once with Nunnally and once with Lelouch. Sure, it's a rare thing, and maybe in a one-on-one -on -one fight it wouldn't even matter, but that's still a caveat that no one else has. So we're going to put Charles at the end of this tier for now. Lelouch has the most iconic Geos ability in the entire show. He has the power of absolute obedience, which can put anyone into a trance. In this trance, Lelouch can command his victim to follow any series of instructions he lays out, and they will follow them without fail. This ability works off of direct eye contact, just like with Charles. Lelouch can win a lot of scenarios with one-word commands like his classic, die, or even something along the lines of, obey. Again like Charles, rather than just beating his opponent, Lelouch can turn them into his pawns, a flexibility that not all Geos users have. Debating between Charles and Lelouch, it's impossible to say who should be higher in a straight up fight. After all, both of their abilities are functionally the same, requiring only eye contact and a simple instruction. Maybe Charles doesn't put his victims into a trance, but Lelouch doesn't seem very confident of that. Unlike Charles, however, Lelouch's Geos has never been broken in the series. In fact, it worked on Nunnally even after she'd already broken Charles's Geos, which might indicate that it's stronger. It's a small margin, but it's the only thing that definitively separates the two on this list. However, we have one more Geos user to discuss. C2 takes the crown for having the single strongest Geos ability on this list. This Geos makes anyone affected by it adore C2 to the point where they can't even conceive of harming her. 
This, of course, would be an instant win in any kind of battle against another Gios user, since just seeing C2 would turn them into little more than slaves. It's one of the fastest Gios abilities on this list, since it works by direct eye contact but does not require any kind of command freeze. This puts her above both Lelouch and Charles, since after making eye contact there is no conceivable window to attack her. It's an ability that seems to require no thought or effort at all, which puts it in a league of its own. So I crown C2 as the undefeatable Gios user of the original series. In the Highlander style battle royale, she survives. Who do you think should get the throne? Do you think certain characters should move up or down a tier or two? Let us know below. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell. Before I go, I just want to give an extra special shout out to all of the incredible patrons over at patreon.com slash kadoyt. We're super active in our patron discord server, occasionally throwing some late night anime and movie watch parties. So if that's something you're interested in, pledge just a single dollar to get an invite. You can also follow us on Twitter at kadobeyond. Links to everything will be in the description. Again, my name is Zero, this is Kado, and thank you all for listening to my dumb rants. Subscribe for more.